The National Movement for Police Reform has opened the door for lawmakers in states like California to make some changes. Powerful police unions in the state have often blocked legislation aimed at curbing abuse of power by law enforcement. Last month, on the day the guilty verdict came down in the Derek Chauvin murder trial, members of the California Black Caucus outlined several bills in the hopes of radically changing policing in their state. One of those legislators, who's also a former police officer, Assembly Member Mike Gibson, joins us now to discuss some of those proposed reforms. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for having me, Grant. So as a former police officer, you've been on both sides of the argument for reform. You recently introduced a bill that bans officers from forming cliques within the department. Tell us more about this bill and why specifically cliques? What is so detrimental to the cohesiveness of the police force and perhaps to the community? Well, first of all, thank you very much for having the interest in this story. Um, Assembly Bill um, 958 will ban police cliques, in other words, police gangs in the department. And so this bill, um, came out of a under revealing of a situation in one of the cities in which I represent, the city of Compton, where <clears throat> that was existing in that particular department. You have police officers who uh, go through this ritual, who is nothing but a gang in itself, and they brag about the use of force that they have used on an individual in the in the community. And so, <clears throat> one deputy sheriff was bullied ridicule and not supported for five years as he was being placed in harm's way but also being pressured to be part of this clique and if you're not part of this clique it's a way for you to be ostracized and again receive um, the bullying tactics that this officer or deputy went through and my bill will ban all those cliques these rituals these police officers gangs in the state of california if it's not good enough for us to have street gangs, it's not good for us to have legal gangs in the department, especially when you have a department should be serving and protecting the community. Um, you also introduced legislation banning certain police holes that create a greater risk of positional asphyxia, right, choke holes. Um, and this follows the death of uh, Mario Gonzalez. He died after being restrained by police in Almeida, California. So law enforcement agencies, some of them are pushing back, uh, saying that, you know, this ban is too vague or that it's unnecessary because of a lot of departments have already sort of outlawed this practice. It does. I do think of Eric Gardner um, when I hear about this because, you know, the chokehold was not was not part of policy for NYPD when he was killed. Um, his words, I can't breathe, um, were the first of that phrase to go viral and ultimately his lawyer argued that it wasn't a chokehold that if it turned out to be a chokehold it was inadvertent or or not deliberate just for a moment and so it was not a violation of police policy so i want to ask you you know what sort of difference do you think it would make then to have a broader piece of legislation banning chokeholds when at least on paper, many police departments have already taken that step. Well, here in California, um, after the George Floyd uh, murder, um, the communities here in California was in uproar. They demanded that California take action, even though this George Floyd murder did not take place in California. So I authored Assembly Bill 1196, banning the carotid artery strain, which is a technique that was used to kill George Floyd with the knee on the neck that cuts and restricts the oxygen flow to the brain. Um, so we banned, again, um, the carotid artery restraints and chokeholds. Chokeholds um, in Los Angeles, Los Angeles Police Department had banned that over 30 years ago. Um, we, the city council banned that because they had a racist police chief that said that when that method was applied to black people, um, people only died because they were black and their necks was too thin. And so we did that piece of legislation, but there was still work that needed to be done. And so I wrote the bill, Assembly Bill 490, that banned positional asphyxiation, which that simply means any position that you um, restricts or stop someone's oxygen. Uh, from flowing through their body is this technique is being banned. And so, yes, police officers are mm -hmm. thinking that there's a piece, there's a tool that's being taken out of their toolbox. You can still restrain someone. You can still make an arrest. We're saying you just cannot cut someone's oxygen off 
and stopped him from ble from breathing. George Floyd, <clears throat> hit, the officer placed his knee on his neck for nine minutes and 29 seconds. The gentleman you see behind me, Angelo Quinto, was killed in the same manner. He, the officer, placed his knee on his neck for five minutes. Angelo Quinto said, I can't breathe. George Floyd said 28 times, I can't breathe. Assembly Bill 490 will prohibit police officers from cutting someone's oxygen off so they can't breathe. And if you can't breathe, you die. And we want to make sure that these techniques are not being used to kill people because we deem it a lethal weapon. Uh, so, Assemblymember Gibson, let me ask you about uh, what's been happening across the country. 46 states in the United States have rules that prevent abusive officers from jumping jobs after they have committed serious misconduct or have been fired. Now, California is not one of those states. Uh, do you believe that the state is lagging on this type of legislation, and are you hoping to change that? Well, absolutely. So the, the Speaker of the Assembly appointed me the chair of the Select Committee on Police Reform. We're going to reimagine what law enforcement looks like in the state of California. And not only that, we're going to have a very aggressive uh, policies through bills that actually reimagine what that looks like. There is a bill um, out of my committee. There's 22 bills that is going through the legislative process here in California. And one of those bills specifically speaks to a police officer who's under investigation. You just can't resign or quit just to escape an investigation or having that investigation closed. This bill will, will make sure that the investigation continues even if you resign, even if you quit the, the, the department, the investigation through this bill will be mandated that it continues to move through the process of the investigation and make a finding other whether a person was um, was willfully misconduct in his or her um, responsibility as a police officer or not. So you won't be able to just quit and just jump to another department. No, we're going to stop this stuff. We're going to stop it now. We don't want to see any more bad police officers um, in our department. And I think I certainly speak for uh, the legislature. Uh, we want bad apples to be taken out. And in some cases, if there's a tree that is producing these bad apples, we want to uproot the tree and plant a new tree where that means better understanding with the community. Um, have a better relationship with the community and law enforcement, and law enforcement with the community, so we can really serve and protect here in California. So we are moving a very aggressive land to reimagine what law enforcement looks like in the state of California. All right, Assemblymember Gibson, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me.